Hi, this is a special podcast in that it, um, it's about a new project, that's a movie project that I've been a part of back in March 2019. Um, myself and two friends, uh, Boris Jansch and Charles Charlie, um, both filmmakers, um, came together with a view about making a documentary about psychedelics movie is called uh, 5MEO and it documents our collective journey um, as we enter the world of psychedelics culminating in an experience with um, the world's most powerful psychedelic known as 5MEO DMT or also known as the God Molecule. Um, so I'm going to show you the trailer now and then of a short enough podcast with um, with the two guys and also our um, sitter and uh, uh, called Ollie. Um, he was our, he doesn't like to be called a guide, but he was the person that held our hands in a way through uh, a major part of the journey. And um, so, uh, you know, a year or a year plus has gone into this from documenting it and from the inception to the documentation of it, to filming to the editing um, and um, the build up to it now over the last few months. So, hey, I suppose it's a request. I'd love you to check it out. Uh, um, I put some links um, to the movie um, in the description and um, uh, I'd love you to check out the movie, I'd love you to check out the podcast, just to get a sense of who we all are. Um, and um, yeah, thank you as ever. The thing that I am most interested in is being alive. Yeah, I'm a bit bored with the person I've apparently become, to be honest. You seem to be kind of a bit blank. Yeah, but I am blank. Okay. I suppose I have wild ideas. I think life should be utterly free. Ready? Yeah, a little bit far. Okay. I'm married with three kids. I'm 59 years old. I don't know why psychedelics showed up on my radar. I certainly don't believe in magic and gods and, and all that. I just don't believe what anybody else says, but I don't have a clue myself. It's life and that's just immediate and now. And... I probably would get out of this if I could. I mean, I don't want to die. They put the parachute on you make everything absolutely as secure and perfect that you can possibly have, but then at the last second you're thrown off an airplane. Now, what happens after that? I, I genuinely think we don't need to do any of this. Why did I want to come and do this? Been nervous for days, kind of terrified all safe ground, time, space, everything is destroyed. This journey has been more profound than I could ever have expected. I, just, I desperately wanted to get back. And I remember saying out loud, this is enough to make you believe in an afterlife. It's so shocking. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Because I always, uh, fuck's sake, I never talk about that, so that's not going to work. I just, I just cut that part out. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Fuck off. Right. Um, so this is a podcast about our new movie called Five M E O. Um, it's released December seventh, which would probably be the, around the time that this particular podcast goes live. And um, to my left, I have Boris. 
Say hello, Boris. Hi, right, Boris. <laughs> right. Diagonally, I have Charles. Hello. And beneath me, I have Ali. Hi, Ali. Yeah, uh, hi, hi. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, so, I um, thought it was a good idea to, given we're launching the movie and it was a year of our lives, I suppose, between the inception of the idea and the edit. And um, I thought it'd be a good idea just to get together and chat about um, the movie and what we all thought of the movie and um, a bit of a background to all of us. Hi, Hi Charles. Hello, Frank. Um, can you remember where you were at when you, you were... And where you were at in life, in a way, when yourself and Boris were having the chat, and suddenly you went, "Yeah, I want to make a movie. I want to be involved in this project." I, I had, uh, I think, uh, thanks to Boris, also read um, this this book that we've often referred to, Michael Pollan's "How to Change Your Mind," which is his kind of review of psychedelic drugs from a very personal perspective, because he he he. He takes all these drugs, including 5-MeO-DMT. Um, and I found that a very, very interesting book. And uh, I suppose that uh, reconnected me a bit to the subject of psychedelics. I mean, when I was in my late teens, early 20s, <clears throat> I did read actually a lot about um, sort of the psychedelic scene uh, of that period, I guess the late 60s, early 70s. Um, you know, Ken Kesey and all those people who started getting into LSD and all that kind of stuff. And I, I had always found it very interesting, but this Michael Pollan book kind of reconnected with me with that. And um, I think that this just seemed like um, an interesting subject. Uh, there was also, of course, you know, am I actually going to do this thing? And, and I suppose that then became like a very personal challenge a bit like, uh, as you've done yourself, Frank, um, doing a parachute jump or some kind of extreme sports activity, or it, it became something, you know, really to start getting uh, kind of hooked on, you know, and, it, and, and it, with its own drama, you know, this is going to be an event set in time and we're going to have to do this thing. So, so there was that. I think in terms of where I was in my life, sorry, I'm going on a bit here, but where I was in my life. I mean, uh, I'm 60 now. And when we did this thing, I was 59 last year. And I think, you know, for anyone, when you get to that age, uh, that, that, that you are just as a matter of course, starting to think about uh, w what have you done with your life maybe. And um, so whilst I would never describe myself or never have described myself as a searcher, someone looking for the absolute meaning of life kind of thing. Um, I think my mind was open to uh, experience that might uh, help me accept. I think what I was sort of very conscious of was uh, the, the, the a need, if you like, to find acceptance as to where I to where I've got to, and and indeed where that might take me in the future. Um, so I, I think that's where I was. Ali, you were that guide um, that we were lucky enough to find. Can you remember um, how you know your first interactions with us and how it came about? Can you remember? You know, even the idea of filming, how you felt about that, um, given the nature really of what we're doing, sometimes we forget that this is um, such a controversial area. And so how was your sense of, um, you know, our first contact and maybe even the idea of being filmed? Um, well, when uh, I first got your mail, um, and as you know, you have a, a very sweet way to write, very, um, yeah, uh, I was very personal already with the very first mail. And um, so so my job 
doing these sessions is uh, that I need to to tune in with it with the other person to see if there's a benefit coming from this and if it's um, possible in a safe way. Um, so contradictory to that is typically if you do filmmaking around such an uh, such an adventure. So for me, it was very important that um, that I come across and like that we on one hand do the do the whole uh, screening thing, like. I need to be on par with all three of you, and and second that we take um, the filming as a as a second event, um, following that following the real event, so to not mix them up together because the uh, as you three know and as I've said in other podcasts, um, it's crucial that. The situation is always one on one that um, the, the client is having the experience, and I'm the safeguard sitting there giving reality and love. You know, I'm it's, it's not about that I want to be like getting too much traction out there, but on the other hand, I have the, the wish to share a different perspective on 5 MEO DMT and also. Uh, using psychedelic drugs because there is so much uh, on one hand shamanic filtering taking place and on the other hand um, a spiritual improvement um, screw, um, filtering taking place so you have on one hand people who want to use psychedelic drugs to become a better person which is naturally taking place in an evolutionary way but it's not, it shouldn't be like the reason to do the psychedelic or the approach or the intention to do the psychedelic. And the other thing is that you have the shamanic people coming from this realm of me and, like which is, du which is duality. Um, it's like me and the spirits, me and the teacher plants, me and Mama Ayahuasca, me and you get it. So it's even me and God there. So uh, ultimately there is no me and the me and the you is just one. And this is what I want to give further with my work, uh, with the way I approach these things. And also, I always want to make uh, awareness, want to spread awareness for how the, um, the toadies are treated when they are naturally hunted and forcefully milked and abused in a way to then uh, serve a process which people call spiritual awakening experience um, kind of on the back of the suffering of that being so well you know I uh, also am deeply into mushroom growing and know that it's so easy to grow mushrooms and to have all the wisdom from that coming from the mushrooms too so why then have a, have a being suffering so that's, this is my approach to raising more consciousness uh, into the whole topic. Um, I was going to say to you that obviously um, five, you, you heard about three people coming to you um, to inquire about you guiding them to take a substance known as 5-MeO, which is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, they say, psychedelic in the planet. Um, it's, it's a big step up. In a way, you know, it's not like doing something small or, you know, it's a, it's a dramatic, um, well, we can say in hindsight, it's a dramatic thing to do. But obviously, you must get people, you must turn down people who come to you. You must go, well, I don't think this yeah, is right. Yeah, for sure. I'm turning a lot of people down. And I'm trying to make this in the nicest and most loving way as possible. Like, I tune in with people and see, um, is the mind... Uh, is the mind uh, asking for a session or is there more behind that? So this is uh, what I try to tune in with uh, because it's the re responsibility I'm taking on. And I've raised three children, you know, I know all things about responsibility. So this is why I'm taking this thing so serious. Hey, um, Boris, you're, um, you're a family man and you have a couple of kids um, uh, did you ever worry at any point that you were doing something irresponsible or you were doing something... Uh, were you ever worried about um, going into doing a movie about substances like this? Or was it just pure curiosity or what? Can you remember back? I don't think I was 
worried about it. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't think I was worried that it would. I definitely wasn't worried that it would. Um, you know, um, make me crazy to um, ruin my brain, ruin my sanity. Um, you know, trigger psychosis or anything like that. Um, I just saw it as potentially this very profound experience that might in a way mirror other experiences that I've had through meditation or through just spontaneous um, glimpsing of the, what I would call the totality. Um, so I thought it might be something to, to, to kind of repeat that. But I was never worried that it would would uh, yeah I was never I, I, I was never concerned in that way and I and I didn't I didn't feel like that was something that was happening to anyone else that was taking it from from the research that I did mm. so so there was yeah so I didn't feel like I was doing something irresponsible or um, dangerous um, although having done it now I can see why people might perceive it as something, um, you know, you need someone like Ollie to, to take you through an experience like this because it is one of the most powerful experiences you'll ever have in your life. So um, you can't imagine that. That's just something that you'll realize if you ever <clears throat> decide that it's something that you would like to do. And we're not saying do this thing because um, we're definitely not advising anyone to go and do it. But if you do do it, you'll see that this thing is very, very, very profound and big. Um, In a way, you see, say if you'd grown up with imagery of what psychedelics would have looked like, you might grow, might have had the, the image in your mind of the 60s and flower power. And um, I suppose just, you know, free love and uh, art and creativity and um, against wars and that kind of movement, we'd say, that somehow got tainted with the word hippie. But let's just say that you might have it in, in your mind that. Now, there's a sort, the 5-MEO experience is, is, not, is not in a way, <laughs> is, Ali, how, what can you talk about? It's not in a way that. It's, it's almost, um, and we talked about this before, this idea of a, <coughs> taking a ferry somewhere or taking a rocket ship. And, um, you know, the MEO experience, five MEO experience, and um, what we had read about even beforehand, we knew, <coughs> but I, I actually, I, I go to uh, Charles with this one. In a way, Charles, like we had, We've obviously, we did a couple of psychedelics in the movie and that's that's what you'd see when you watch it. But um, you have that image of the 60s in your mind and then you would have, I'm not sure you read too much. I got the impression you didn't read too much about 5-MEO. No, that, that, uh, that, that is true. I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for. And... Um, I, I, just to go back to what uh, the question you asked Boris, I think when it got close, when, for example, we were actually met Ollie, I did actually start to think I was doing something pretty irresponsible. And um, I can remember thinking um, this, my daughter, for example, is possibly not very, could, might not be very cool with this idea if she knew the kind of level of fear that, that I'm currently experiencing. Because I, you know, I, 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 I was concerned about my health to some extent. Anyway, that's uh, just going back to that point. Um, no, I, I, didn't, uh, I, I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for. And I think you're right, um, as again, uh, to use Boris's words, in hindsight, the 5-MEO experience is a long way away from that kind of flower power uh, image um, that one might have when you hear the word psychedelics. 
mm. which I think are most, for most people are driven by uh, pretty pictures, uh, wobbly walls, um, uh, you know, that, that kind of thing, lots of colour. Um, and, 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 I, and I think that that's more... I mean, as I, as I understand it, I mean, the principal sort of psychedelic experiences that are often described from that, from that initial wave of psychedelics at the end, mid to the end of the 60s, are very much driven by, you know, mushrooms and LSD. Um, and so it's slightly, the, the, the 5 meo is in a different category, I would say, yeah. As we uh, all found out. How was the weight of bringing people through an experience like this for you? Um, as you know, uh, for me, the experience is kind of like as intensive and as you know intimate as it is for for the person he, being here. Um, and uh, for sure, it's all what you say is is right. But then again, this is why I take so much time and so much effort into um, getting in tune with people. And screening screening sounds so like you know sterile. It's it's more of like an uh, you know tuning into love with others. So it's it's a lot of things I've learned in the past eight years. So um, so yeah, yeah. So now it's all different in that sense. So um, I, I I rarely have these. No, I, I don't have this feeling. So if I don't want to do this again, it's it's quite the opposite. I'm always very thrilled to finally get to know the person. Most um, psychedelic movies, let's just say that we might have had ideas of, are filled with the wobbly walls and the psychedelic imagery. You didn't go down that route. You tried to capture as best in a way this enormous and it's an enormous experience. You tried to capture that. Can you, can you remember in your mind any of the challenges that yeah, you might have faced? Or that's an interesting, it's a, it's a good question, Frank. Um, that is, stop. <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah, that is a good question, though. It's it's interesting uh, because it's uh, um, it's like the spiritual search. That there's this idea that you can progress towards enlightenment and that the closer you get the better you'll be at describing maybe nirvana or or bliss or you know or the better you are with words the, the more the closer you'll be to being able to paint a picture of what you are essentially as this present is a conscious being or whatever and like with a film about psychedelics maybe there's the idea that if I if I get really creative with vid visuals I'll be able to give people a, a, a sense of exactly what it's like but um, Uh, from my point of view, I, I, I think it's so clear that those aspects of the experience which are sort of superficial in the sense that they're, you know, like, let's say you've got the, the, uh, the, 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 the early part of the mushroom experience where things are getting wavy and color and a bit the, the colors are being turned up the volumes being turned up on the colors and things like that those aspects of it are not the most interesting aspects for me i'm sure not for anyone who's really done a full dose of mushrooms or the 5 meo um, the most interesting aspect of it is the fact that what you perceive to be this kind of normal, um, David puts it really well in the film, this general consensus reality is completely altered. And, it's, and you can't represent that with visuals. You just can't do it. So you've got to use words. And uh, some people are good at it. Some people are less good at it. 
but the more sort of poetic you can be, I, I thought, the more. I try fine. and put it in a nutshell, shall I? No, no, I think that was, I actually thought you have captured it very well. In, I mean, that is the, that was the struggle always. I mean, even there's, there's a line in the film where you say, how are we going to be able to tell people about this? And I think it is that, um, it is that authenticness that, <clears throat> um, you know, that, that, that you get from the movie. In, uh, you try to document as much as is reasonable and possible three people's um, experience and of venturing into this world. And, um, but I think that is the challenge. You, you're, to, to say to somebody, oh, it completely alters the, the view of what's happening. It sounds like a couple of words where you can, your brain can go, okay, well, I wonder what that's like. It's probably like this or, or, or you might leave it as, geez, I can't imagine that and it's parked. But for it to be utterly altered. See, your daughter came up to you and said, for example, <laughs> that's a tougher one. Your daughter came up and said, Dad, I saw the movie. <coughs> I want to go and do that. I called Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> I've already called Ollie and made an appointment. <laughs> well, that, that, I'd feel a lot happier if she said that. Um, I'd feel, I'd feel uh, we were a long way there. Uh, what would I say? I think, um, well, I, I think it's like Boris says, I, I would neither encourage nor discourage. I mean, I think Ollie has mentioned this before. I, I think um, having a few years on the clock is not a bad idea to some extent. Um, I, I, I do mm -hmm. think uh, it's an experience that somehow fits with having lived a bit of life. I, I, that might be a very pretentious and unfair thing to say, but it seemed, that seemed to be the case for me anyway. And I slightly think it's not, I, I do, I'm, I'm very interested to know what it would have been like for me if I had done that in my twenties, say. Um, I don't think I would have done actually. I don't think I would, I would have done. Um, mm. uh, Sorry, I, I'm really rambling. I don't know how to answer that question. I, That's good. I, I mean, but I totally acknowledge the question. You see what I mean? I, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's a very good I think, question. Uh, well, and I, and I, but I, I don't know what I would do. I think it depends very much on the person in front of me who asks that question. Uh, it, it, you actually say my daughter, I would say to her, to be honest with you, maybe that's something you want to leave a few years, but by all means. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I would certainly say you damn well got to be, make sure you've got to find someone like Ollie to do it um, with mm. you. Uh, because that whole, um, what do they call it? Scene and setting, whatever it is, uh, is absolutely vital. I mean, it's sort of uh, absolutely vital that that is right. Yeah. It's the furthest thing from, in my mind anyway, um, Ollie, it's the furthest thing from a party drug. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that psychedelics are necessarily any of them are necessarily party drugs. You know? Yeah, I think isn't that the funny Talk, thing? Talking about talking about uh, like psilocin, uh, LSD, maybe mescaline. You know, uh, it, but but in a way, isn't that the thing when we talked about the sixties and the imagery of that? You don't get the inward journey sense you don't realize that uh you know this this view transforms but this view also transforms in terms of how this uh, the whole upper artist inward looks and that can't that's the part that can never be described apart from wobbly pictures that uh you're you're <laughs> you uh, you're going in whether you like it or not you're going inwards Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all, it's a, it's a dose dependent thing. Also, you know, we've been talking about like how strong 5 million T is. Well, as a funny fact, yeah, uh, it's not necessarily only the 5 MEO DMT. Uh, and you, co can, you could go into the structure of what is making it so powerful because it is 5, 5th position, MEO, DMT, and then DMT. Yeah. So big difference or not? It's just one molecule. Yeah. Uh, changing making it different, yeah? 
But um, what the it, hell's happening? I mean, it's, it's, it's a molecule. It's a molecule going into your lungs. No. Nah, then what's yeah, happening? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, Isn't I mean, it? <laughs> uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it, but your brain is on drugs all the time. I mean, you, <laughs> um, you're you're like the biggest drug dealer for yourself all the time. Your brain is yeah. just like twenty four seven high. See, the thing is, the interesting thing is, five mil DMT is a uh, endogenous drug, so it's in your brain anyway. However, if you take a full dose NN, yeah, NN DMT, you go beyond the machine elves. It's there's no visions stuff taking place. You just dissolve in light. And you know best that the dissolving in light is moksha, you know, it's samsara, samsara is uh, that experience. And um, I think, uh, well, I'm, I'm conscious in a way of keeping this, I, I, I like the idea of leaving it sort of on, uh, go and have a look at the movie. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. without, without giving too much away. I but I would like people to watch the movie because I think what you can see in it is like a three, it's like a whole lot of sort of slices of moments in our three separate progression journey where you do start to get some sense of what we felt before, what we felt very just before and what we felt afterwards immediately afterwards and then what we felt sometime later and it's a kind of 360 degree look at that I think um, and because the, we talk about our feelings at all those moments I think you do get some sense of authenticity around that I think I think it's quite human as well um, in the sense that I think we'd all profess to be relatively normal people. And this is a very <laughs> abnormal experience, I think. This movie, uh, our movie, Boris and your movie, is, um, is about uh, being human and the human experience and the amazing... Um, space called love behind that and um it's mu it's much more beyond the psychedelic uh, documentary it's bye everyone to, i have to go for a pee okay boss it's an honor to be on your, on your podcast uh yeah by the way thank great you. to see you four dudes that's an honor it's you. an honor to have you dudes Lots of love, love you. you bye bye Ali. bye bye, bye, bye dudes see you bye, bye. Bye, Ali. Bye. Hi, if you like the conversation that I just had and you'd like more, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.